Hey chappies, welcome to the week 7 roundup for our EFHL CBDO indoor soccer season, the road to the championship. And we'll uh, first we'll have a look at the individual matches and then we'll look at the overall stats, okay? So in game 1, and these were all interleague games, meaning no divisional implications from these games, okay? Norman Division versus Saxon Division matches, all four of them. Okay, game one was the Fulham Firebirds taking on the Watford Werewolves. That ended in a 2-2 draw. Uh, Noel Latham and uh, Ernesto Del Playa each scored a goal for Watford. And Gennaro Giorgiano and Luke Trellman both scored goals for uh, the Werewolves. Um, second match uh, was the only clear... Uh, uh, victory match this week. Uh, the Huddersfield Hydras shut out the Manchester Manticores 2-0. Uh, there was some dodgy officiating in the second half, as I recall. Uh, uh, Klaus Gruner scored a goal for uh, Huddersfield, as did Cesar Colombo. And uh, it, the score could have been 3-0 because at one point it appeared that Manchester uh, kicked an own goal. And that was simply... Um, me forgetting who had possession and which direction the ball was supposed to be kicked. And that happens sometimes with me when I'm, because I'm doing so many things at once, you know, all this stat keeping, uh, you know, playing for two different teams, being the referee. And when it all comes together, sometimes I get confused. And I, I try very hard for that not to happen. But that didn't have an impact on the game itself, okay? Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll just move on. Uh, match three, Liverpool Leviathans taking on the Southampton Centaurs also ended in a draw. Uh, one all. Uh, Roberto Necesito and Enrique Salvador each scored goals in that match. Uh, and finally, uh, match fourth, Guilford Griffins and the Cardiff Krakens, another one one all draw. Uh, Chris Kamara, his first goal of the season happened for the Krakens in this game. And Goran Stanovich scored a goal for Guilford. So where does that leave uh, the overall uh, standings? Well, there was no change in standings in the in the Saxon division. I'll just go ahead and say that. But uh, there was some movement in the uh, Norman division. Um, the Hydras moved up from fourth to third, and Watford dropped to fourth. But otherwise, we have Liverpool Leviathans with 15 points, uh, top of the Norman division, and indeed the EFHL at this moment. That could change. Uh, Guilford is still within range. Frankly, Huddersfield is still slightly within range. Uh, and technically, Watford is still within range. They're still, if if Liverpool loses the next three matches and Watford wins the next three matches, Watford could become top seed. Okay, and of course, after week ten, there will be a divisional playoff between number one and number two seed in the Norman division and number one and number two in the Saxon division to create our Norman and Saxon division champions, and then there will be an EFHL championship. Okay. Um, Guilford Griffin's currently second seed with 11 total points. Uh, Huddersfield, third seed with eight points. And Watford Werewolves with seven uh, points. So it's still within reach. And it's much murkier here in the uh, Saxon division. Yeah, even the Krakens, if Southampton loses the next three matches, the Krakens could, in theory, be top seed. But as it stands, they are fourth. The Manticore City, who were at the top seat of the division for a while, if I recall correctly. Now in third, Fulham Firebirds with 10 points in second, and the Southampton Centaurs, top seed in the Saxon division at this point. And um, you know, I'm just looking at some of these other uh, statistics. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. The Krakens have committed the most fouls this season. Um... And, yeah, I don't see, as far as saves, well, it looks pretty consistent. The werewolves haven't made a lot of saves. That's not a reflection on the, the keeper so much as uh, the, the scores in their particular matches. Um, I don't see anything else out of the ordinary. Uh, Leviathans, of course, have 12 goals, and as a result, they're, uh, they have 15 total points. So you score goals, yeah, you, you get points. Uh, everything else looks pretty the math looks solid here. So, that rounds up week seven. Now, before we move on to, to week eight, as is custom, I'll play a match with some Premier League uh, modern Subidio bases. You know, the rubber figures on the, the not-so-great bases. They're okay, and they've all been polished. But 
I'm also, I'm just going to go ahead and, and rather than wait until the end of this season, I am going to go ahead and start experimenting with some new rules, some new equipment, and, and of course, the, the, the Premier League players. We're, we're going to let the uh, goalkeepers on a stick have a rest, and I'm going to use the uh, cardboard solo keeper, the weighted cardboard solo keepers uh, on this pitch, which I haven't done much. Uh, and I just want to see, I, I would love to ditch the TV guides on either end of the, of the pitch here. That would allow me to put the scoreboard on one end. And we might even pull back on the... Uh, if I thought you could see the difference between the clubs, that's the only problem. I know we get that shimmering heat effect when I zoom in on this. At least I can see it. I don't know if you can see it on playback or not. But from this range, I mean, you can clearly tell the yellow kits from the red kits. But back from here, pals, I'm just not so sure. Uh, now... With the Premier League bases, I will say that the bases are distinct enough uh, that you could probably get away with being able to tell who's who because of the color of their bases. Uh, not so with these clear, translucent, uh, super footy bases. So I'm just going to have to, uh, we're just going to have to see. I'm going to experiment with an 18 millimeter ball, which is going to be very much more difficult to, to hit, to hit, to actually make contact with, much less get in the net. Uh, and the larger goalkeeper is going to, you know, probably will result in in lower scoring affair next. It's going to be. Let me. I'll, I'll be perfectly frank, pals. The next match is going to be an absolute shit show, probably. But again, I'm just experimenting with different equipment, and we may implement some new rules, which are actually very old rules, including making the shooting line the halfway line rather than anywhere on the pitch outside the goal area. Um, that's a standard rule in a lot of five-a-side Subudio rule sets. Uh, again, it's going to lower the scores dramatically. And, you know, we could be looking at nil-nil affairs for a long time as I can try to gain the skill to actually uh, move the ball, an uh, 18-millimeter ball around, get it across a goalkeeper with a much larger footprint than the keepers we have right now, and only take shots when the ball is on the proper side of the shooting line. That could compound for very low scoring and perhaps even boring matches. We'll just have to see. That's what this uh, next match is all about. I'm just going to experiment, okay? And then once that match is played out, we'll get back into EFHL gameplay and we'll uh we'll kick off week 8 beyond that, okay? And we're, you know, we're over the hump. We're we're drawing into the the the, the crunch, I think is what Sabu and Tony Harrison would call this at this point, the crunch. And uh I'll see you then, pals. Now, back to the studio. <laughs>